welcome back to another Budget Model Railways review. And today we're going to be taking a look at this brand new 3D printer from Artillery called the Sidewinder X2. I promise it's a 3D printer and not a guided missile system. Upon unboxing this 3D printer, I really took in the sheer scale of this machine. It's a large scale printer and the build volume of it can fit up to seven times the build volume of the Creality Ender 2 that we reviewed previously, meaning that this printer is perfect for printing in much larger scales such as O-gauge or G-gauge, and in fact as we're going to try later in the summer, potentially even Z-gauge, because we are thinking about 3D printing an entire tiny Z-gauge layout in one piece just using this 3D printer. Now I'm really excited to go over the features of this printer because for the price it is absolutely packed full with really valuable features for the user including things like filament sensors right up the top there so it'll automatically pause your print if you run out of filament and make a nice bleeping noise to alert you. It also has dual z-axis screws now this is really important because it can significantly reduce the visibility of layer lines in your print especially layer shifts so it will result in a much higher print quality because both sides of the gantry that the nozzle rides on are getting lifted up simultaneously which is a feature that most gantry style 3d printers don't actually have this one is also synchronized with a belt on the top to make sure that both of them are turning at exactly the same rate it also has a nice full color touchscreen display, which is very intuitive to use. However, I did find it to be a bit dim. My printer is sat in a sunny side of my shed, and especially when the sun is shining, I can hardly see what's on the screen. So I think it could be a little bit of improvement there. But in terms of functionality, it works very well. You can send your files to the printer either via the USB cable that comes included, or via a USB stick, which is also included, or via a micro SD card which you'll have to supply yourself but I actually quite like the USB stick it's a bit more rugged than using a micro SD card like other printers where you always end up losing it You can't really lose a USB stick as easily with your device inserted you can simply tap on the print button and then go and find your file you'd like to print and confirm that that's what you'd like to print and then the printer will heat up for you I found that it heats up very efficiently and fast on this machine both the bed and the nozzle so despite having a very large build bed it still heats up much faster than any of the other printers I've experienced before I'd say carrying on with the super rugged design by having a solid metal base and also using the triple aluminium extrusion rather than the double which a lot of them use Combined with the fact that this has larger stepper motors, the printer is able to print incredibly fast and also very silently. They've not hyped up the noise too much, but for a printer that doesn't boast about being silent, it's actually one of the quietest I've ever heard, which is really impressive. And the features just keep coming. It also has a direct drive extruder using a Volcano hot end. It's a lot of words all at once, but what that means is that instead of using a plastic tube to push the filament through, it just draws the filament in directly at the point where it melts it, which means there's no tube to get jammed up. The volcano nozzle means that more filament can get melted at a time, which aids to the ability to be able to print much faster because you can melt your filament faster. And by now, you all know I love to go on about my part cooling fans. They're one of the most important parts of a 3D printer for getting good quality prints. And yeah, this printer really hits the mark on that. It's got a huge blower style fan on the front there, dedicated to part cooling, which as you'll see later, really makes a difference in terms of the overhangs. It's really, really good. The printer also has auto bed leveling. Now, I'm not really a big fan of auto bed leveling in general. I'd rather just do it myself. But for those of you that like auto bed leveling, this printer has it and I can confirm it works very well. So taking a look at the overhang print here, we can see that it has passed with flying colors all the way up to 70 degrees. There is almost no stringing at all. So that high quality fan is really proving to make a massive difference there. The tolerance test actually surprised me. 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, obviously it passed. But for the first time, a printer passed on 0.3 millimeters. And unfortunately, I broke 0.2 trying to get it out. 
taking a look at our tiny N-gauge diesel. This printer isn't the best I've seen and the smaller details, but that is because it is more tuned to larger prints. So looking at the opposite end of the spectrum, here we have a 30 centimeter tall figure of my dad, which has come out very well. The lines in it are actually due to the scan not being perfect, but the print quality on this is really good. And it printed this entire figure in only three and a half hours. So it's very fast. And the final test print is the classic 3D Benchy. Now again, very fast, printed this in only 45 minutes and the quality of it is very comparable to actually the test that I did on the resin printer. So that's a very impressive quality test in that term. So to sum up, I am very impressed with the Artillery Sidewinder X2. It's another one of them printers where for the price, I can't really find a fault for it. It's about £300 brand new, but the features that you get with it more than justify this slightly increased price. The build volume is seven times that of the Creality Ender 2, and it can print much, much faster. The fact that it has a direct drive metal extruder means that you are not going to get anywhere near as many jams. In fact, I have not jammed this a single time while I've been testing it and normally tubed printers jam very easily. The entire metal construction makes it a very solid base and makes sure that the prints are more robust because there are less layer lines. Layer lines, as well as looking bad, also reduce the strength of a print, which can be very important for structural parts that I like to make a lot. I'm also very impressed with the fact that it has a dual Z axis um, screw. This again helps to reduce the layer lines and just generally improve the print quality. So it's a very impressive printer for the price and I would more than recommend it to anyone who's looking to print larger objects or as I said even smaller gauges such as Z and printing an entire layout in one piece.